What's up everybody, I'm BatJackJW, thanks for clicking on the video. We're going to be talking about some Hollywood guns and some of the ones that influenced me to buying them because I saw it in the movie. Now, I know some of you just don't get that, but uh, there is a type of romance with that and I've got a few subscribers here that do definitely uh, get that. Anyway, um, this is just a handful of the ones that stuck out with me through my, you know, just in my mind right off the bat. And I've done a lot of videos with each one, really, and covering a lot of those things. But um, I'm just going to really kind of go over the ones. These are just kind of the key ones that just kind of popped in my mind, really, that I chased after specifically because of a movie. And there is no better way to start this thing with the very first one. And this actually may surprise some of you that which one it is. It's a Smith & Wesson pre-Model 10. Okay, This is a snub nose 38 six-shot K-frame. This is cool. This one was made in 1948, and it's it's a really neat revolver. The first time I laid eyes on this was in a movie Witness with Harrison Ford. Always wanted it ever since I saw it in that movie. Great movie, by the way. It's a good drama, cop drama. Um, it, it just really what attracted me to it was the, the size of this thing. This thing was just absolutely a beefcake of a revolver, especially for a snubby. Normally when you think of the snubbies, you think of the Saturday night special, put in your you know jacket pocket, strap it to your ankle, that kind of thing. Well, this thing would probably rip a hole in your jacket or pull your pants down or uh, hurt your ankle after a day or two walking around with it or probably five minutes. <laughs> it's a hefty revolver and it ain't even loaded yet. So, um, this is, I saw it in that movie and I just said, man, I got to have this thing. This thing is cool. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a unique type of gun because this is a pre-10 and it has certain features on it that this is specifically what they had in the movie. The, the type of blade sight, the hammer. It's not the first one I bought. The first one I bought was actually a 10-5. And the more I had it, the more I, I looked at the movie and went, that's not exactly the right one. What is the right one? came to finding this one and I had to have it went absolutely crazy and just went and searched like heck to find this one I have an episode uh, where I talk strictly about it so I'm not gonna go into it but that's one of them alright so then let's move on you know of course uh, a Walther PPK in 22 I have a model PP police pistola they call it and it's got a little bit of a different um, look to it that's because I, I couldn't put that one, I couldn't get that one out of the safe. It's in an oil bag right now, so I didn't want to mess with it. But anyway, the Walther PBK, obviously James Bond. I've been a fan of James Bond for a long time. This is what he carried. And they even went back to it. I know that in 96, 95, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies with Pierce Brosnan, that's when they showed up with the P99. That is when it changed, and I know a lot of people were like, you know, just the nostalgia of the PPK. And they finally went back to it, I believe, in Quantum of Solace with uh, Daniel Craig. And Daniel Craig actually still used the P99 in his first uh, Bond film, uh, Casino Royale. So, and then I know that it's also different in Octopussy with uh, Roger Moore. They were using, I think they called it the P5, if I'm not mistaken. That was really just to please Walter. Uh, they were, you know, they had their new gun out and they decided to toss it in a movie and really that's where it came. But if you watch Dr. No, it's kind of weird because they they call it a PPK, but if you look at it carefully, it is a model PP. Uh, it's You'll tell by the tapered end on it. But anyway, Walther PPK had to have it and especially it's in 22 LR. It's a little cheaper to shoot. I'm not much of a 22 guy. In fact, that right now currently that's the only 22 pistol I have left. I had gotten rid of all the other ones. Um, okay, so moving on, let's uh, jump back into a revolver. And this is a Colt Diamondback, four inch barrel, 38 special. Uh, this is a D frame, so it's kind of more similar to like a K frame on a Smith & Wesson. This was basically because of the movie Brannigan with none other than John Wayne. Brannigan is an awesome cop movie. You know, it's probably he wound up doing those because he turned down the role of Dirty Harry and seeing how successful it was. But in a way, we got two two great things out of one, you know, thing. Basically, you know, he turned down the role of Dirty Harry, but it gave Clint Eastwood a chance to make five of them and be absolutely phenomenal. And on the other hand, with John Wayne, we got two great cop movies. Brannigan and, come on, trivia. Leave it in the comments below. <laughs> All right, so 
Brannigan, this is a cool, cool gun, and this is exactly what uh, what he got in there. It's a four-inch barrel, thirty-eight special. They show a nice uh, close-up in the beginning, talking about it and everything like that. Just I I have a video on that, so that's one of them. Okay, and the next, uh, speaking of Dirty Harry, the Model Twenty Nine. Now, of course, this is the eight barrel, the eight and three eighths. Uh, I have the six, but. I just uh, I figured bring out the eight and three eighths because it just we just recently did the uh, video on the <laughs> do you feel lucky <laughs> well do you punk <laughs> uh, we did that one figured to bring it out but this is one that now it's a big revolver it's a big massive end frame revolver 44 magnum it's like man what you know what would you do to that thing but in reality because Dirty Harry I did buy it and wound up liking this revolver a great deal. It's a very smooth shooting, fine shooting revolver. Uh, even with magnums, it does not recoil very much. It's not going to rip your arm off or anything like that. But shooting 44 specials in this thing even makes it more of a dream to shoot. And I've shot this thing in quite some distance, and it just, it's a tack driver. It really is. It's an amazing gun. I wound up buying the, I bought the 6 first, and then I bought the 8 and 3 eighths, really, because it's also seen in the movie Taxi Driver with Robert De Niro, one of my other favorite movies. And then I bought the 3-inch uh, the barrel. It's in stainless steel, so it's a 629. That's what the 6 prefix means on Smith & Wesson's. So it's stainless steel. 3-inch barrel. It's a really beautiful gun. You guys seen that a lot on the channel. So, anyway. Um, and then, of course, uh, my John Wayne special. Really, uh, you can't... It's hard for me to think of a to not think of John Wayne when I see a six gun because he's just synonymous with so many westerns aged uh, yellow grips and everything this is an offering by Cimarron it's called the Rooster Shooter I have an entire story about this gun on many times on the channel but uh, so I won't go into it but anyway there it is the John Wayne six gun the Rooster Shooter this is what I got I like these uh, Cimarrons because they're an exact copy of the old, the old West gun and without the cost, without the price tag, basically of like two thousand dollars or so, or fifteen hundred dollars for a genuine Colt. Um, and I like the fact that you know I can slam this in my holster, you know, put it on the shooting desk or whatever, then not have to worry that you know, oh man, I don't want to scratch this like fifteen hundred dollar gun or two thousand dollar gun. Last but not least, the Beretta, Beretta ninety two. Uh, this is I think they call this the M nine anniversary configuration, something like that, uh, because of the military. Uh, hey, Memorial Day was just, uh, you know, up, so, you know, good to, good to celebrate their pistol that they have, but anyway, it wasn't because of that. I bought this gun, really, because of Lethal Weapon. I'm a big fan of uh, Lethal Weapon and uh, Mel Gibson, Martin Riggs, you know, it just it really, I know, it's kind of odd that I'm a revolver guy that would not notice the Danny Glover's Model 19, but it was really the this was what made me like it I just uh, you know watching Lethal Weapon and the other one what's the other one come on Die Hard Die Hard with Bruce Willis the first three at least he uses this and it's uh, kinda a little known fact that in the first Die Hard and the first Lethal Weapon it was the same gun that they used in both movies same prop gun so kinda interesting that's what made me want this thing just because of the just those movies, those two movies right there, Lethal Weapon and Die Hard, really push it over the edge for me wanting this pistol. It's a really cool pistol. It's absolutely sexy. The lines of this gun, it photographs and videos very well. And I believe that's probably why the movies use it so much. But uh, yeah, definitely. It's really cool. But uh, there's a little taste uh, flavor, I guess, of the guns in Hollywood that really influenced me to buying them and everything. So there's a few others. I just wanted to kind of talk about the handful of ones anyway <laughs> anyway uh without making this video too long i'm bad check jw thanks for watching i uh, appreciate it like share and subscribe also don't forget if you are on facebook bat jack jw is now on facebook that's a big step for me but uh, basically there you'll see a, a share of the videos and things like that and uh, maybe a photo or two some back to back behind the scenes footage of some of our range stuff that we're doing but anyway follow me there if you like but there it is Catch us later on another video. Like, share, and subscribe, guys.